And we're back. So after winning the double with Messi and Co, we've bid farewell to Inter Miami for a new challenge. We've touched down in Lisbon and picking up from where former gaffer Ruben Amorim left us, our first order of business was bringing Big Ronnie back home. We love a good fairy tale here at Sir Marco. So welcome back to Season 1, Episode 3 of Mr. Worldwide. Right, before we start, I've got some bad news. Inacio is joining Monaco. But we haven't got time to worry about that. We need to make a choice. And only one of you can join us. This mug doesn't know what he's doing. Sit down and let me take your best player from you. We need him more than you do. Welcome to Sporting. Our new number 11, Fasundo Farias. It breaks my heart to leave Campania out of Miami. But Farias is going to do bits for us. 21 mil and Trincao as the sacrificial lamb. 27 mil left in the kitty. Let's do some damage. Don't worry Arteta. I don't want Raya or Havertz. You'll barely know he was gone. Ex-Porto prospect and Fox River prisoner T-Bag joins us for 25 mil plus some Ricardo bloke. We've completely blown our load. So we've sold Lee Tao Suk to Betis. Gent Katamo joins our old flame into Miami. And Muniz joins Valencano on loan just to make way for our Inacio replacement. Even though we've still got four centre-backs, we've snagged Israel Reyes on the free. Who looks like a bit of a beast to be honest. And last but not least, we've signed Bergval. He joins us as a passion project. Now after all that's done, we're looking like a tasty little sangria. Ronnie's been made captain, for obvious reasons. Pedro's moved into that deeper line playmaker role. Teabag as the 10. Farius on the left, where he caused so much mischief in the MLS. As mentioned, we've joined halfway through the season. So we're in good nick for the league, just two points off top. And we've got a good shot at the UEFA Conference League. So let's jump straight into that, shall we? Look at that. Ronnie's not even played a game yet and they've got the TIFO out. And let's be honest, he's the type of player to thrive off of that kind of love. And he does well to return that love with two incredible goals in our first game in Europe. He's taking the piss for that bicycle kick, but I'm all here for it. Now, I don't want to hear any of the Messi versus Ronaldo BS. They're the best players to ever grace a football pitch. And personally, I don't have a favourite. Although, I might lean towards whoever scores the most goals for us. Messi leads the way with 18 goals at Inter Miami. Can CR7 beat that in the six months we've got left of the season? Well, you have to watch and find out, won't you? After demolishing Ferran Vavos, we had the pleasure of welcoming Benfica to the Jose Alvalada Stadium in our first Lisbon derby. Now, there was obviously more than just bragging rights at stake here. The enemy sit two points clear of us at the top of the table. And after going three goals down in the first half, we managed to claw our way back into the game. And with three minutes remaining, we managed to rescue a point at the depths. Ronaldo with the brace as we managed to keep ourselves in this title race. It's the 94th minute and the ball's pulled back for Vieira who can make himself a hero, but it's a dreadful shot. Waste man. Now, maybe I'm being too harsh. We shouldn't have left it until the 94th minute to try and find a winner against our bloody rivals. Crap, the lot of you. I want a better performance against Vitesse. Yes, Farias opens his account, but just look at the whip on this free kick. It's incredible. Thiago Silva, you should know better though. A 30-year-old born in Lisbon. Bloody blasphemy, mate. Farius with a brace and his new boots. It looks like it's game, set and match. But in the final minutes, they send up their keeper. And with a defender in his way, he tries to find the angle. Pedro, in his own half, spanks it. And with just enough juice left in the tank, it trickles over the goal line. Eat your bloody heart out, son. Bex would be proud. And so would Pierre Yves Hamel. Shout out Paris FC. Season 3, episode 2 out next, by the way. We had Spanish side Osasuna in the round of 16. We got a goal behind from Chucky. But it's Farius and Ronaldo linking up for the equaliser. And youngster Abdul Fatarou making no mistake with the finish to make it 2-1. It was somewhat in vain as Moy Gomez pops up with an equaliser to end the first leg 2 all. We travel to the El Sadar Stadium in Pampelona where nothing less than a victory will do. Captain CR7 cancels out Marcel's early opener. But I'm telling you now, remember the name or buy him in your own career mode as Abdul Fatou guides home a predator missile with his left peg. He even whips out a Sui for good measure as we end the game 4-3 on aggregate. We hopped on a flight to Besiktas and we didn't just come to Turkey for a new hairline and a set of veneers. We had a job to do and it wasn't an easy job as Rebic whips in an absolute perler of a cross to some bloody gazelle bloke. Hey, that's, that's a boy from Leon. 
I actually forgot he was playing. <laughs> I thought he retired. I suppose he has actually no he's playing in Turkey. Wait, no, I take that back. Emre Moore came from Turkey and it was a blinder for us into Miami. Fabio Vieira, honestly, you will be playing for Besiktas if you keep missing these bloody chances. But it was super CR7 to the rescue as he hits the rebound like a prime big shack. We scraped through with a comeback win, but we had absolutely no room for error in the return fixture. We had to do anything in our power for a win. Ronnie, early in the first half, goes full Sunday league but manages to slot it away. He's then slipped through by Reese in the second half to make it two to the good with a delightful finesse shot into the top corner. Fresneda with a goal line clearance he knew absolutely nothing about. Pedro then coming to Farris's rescue as we walk away into the semi-finals with our heads high. 50 wins for Sir Marco and let's make it 51. We go into the penultimate game of the season where a point is all that is needed to clinch the league title in our first six months and Boa Vista are all that stand in our way. Now we've been in these high pressure games before. Kansas City in the MLS Cup, the semi-finals against Red Bull, the recent Lisbon derby, all three games spring to mind where we go behind early doors and have to claw our way back into the game and I was determined not to make the same mistake in this clash. We needed to dispatch Boa Vista confidently and comfortably. Ronnie and Sir Marco giving the team talk was all that was needed to fire up the lads in this absolute thumping of a victory. CR7 leading the way as he bags a hat-trick in 55 minutes. This was more than just a title deciding game. This was a warning shot to the likes of Benfica and Porto that we're not the underdogs anymore. Lock your doors at night, sleep with one eye open, do what you need to do because we're here to take the lot. Ronnie walking up to the podium to lift his first title with Sporting and our second in 18 months. And technically, I suppose we can actually leave Sporting now we've won a major. But I just can't bring myself to even think about moving on. We haven't even had a full season with the lads and it smells like something special is cooking here in Lisboa. As fireworks rain over the city, the streets of Lisbon are lined with Sporting Guistas for our semi-final clash against Vecchia Signola. The Bianconeri came to visit the Jose Alvalade Stadium for the first time since the Europa League quarter-final win in April last year. And Ronaldo went into this game hungrier than ever with a point to prove against his old team. Missed free kicks and Chesney saves listed the stats, but as Farius places the ball down for the corner, he takes a glance up and sees there's nobody marking the most lethal finisher in the game. As Ronaldo stands free just off the six-yard box, he leaps up to not home the opening goal in this semi-final clash. Showing respect to his old team, he puts his boyhood club one step closer to a historic double. As the clock strikes midnight, our fairy tale night comes to an early end as we lose our foothold in the game to a moist keen leveller. Like a wet flannel, the rebound off an add and save is all that was needed to dampen the mood. And with the embers of the night dwindling, we head to the Allianz Stadium for the second leg of this semi-final clash. Sir Marco was the changing room DJ because in the immortal words of Take That, the boys were looking to relight the fire in Turin. Play through by Ronaldo, Edward's first chance of the game is snuffed out quickly. The pair link up again for a second strike of the match and Marcus makes no mistake this time and lights up the night like it's remember remember the 5th of November. As the first half plays out with the memory of the first leg fresh in our minds we're searching for that two goal cushion. Our best chances come from an Edwards long shot and Argentinian acrobatics. We go into the second half on a knife's edge. Quartes running an offside trap that Chiellini would have been proud of and someone slipped that line over fiver. He's done us a proper favour. Not getting that two goal cushion comes back to bite us in the arse. As Vlahovic is slipped through, he makes it 1-0 and after 180 minutes of football, we're into extra time, Jeff. But can these two titans find a winner in extra time? Well, with the ball at his feet, he delivers it on a silver platter for Ronaldo to head home the winner love him or hate him he's always there to drag you through the game when you need it most hitting a disrespectful suey in front of the home fans of his old club he's put us through to our first european final can we be on course for what only a handful of managers have done before us and win back to back doubles the stage has been set for what is arguably the most important game of football in both of these clubs histories sporting lisbon versus Brighton and Hove Albion in the UEFA Conference League final. So sit back and enjoy.
Muchas gracias, afición. Este para vosotros. Sí. It's like he's been practicing all year for this one chance in the final of the Conference League to win the double. He whips out a perla. Now, after scoring in the opening four minutes, it's fair to say our heads were still spinning. Brighton delivers a Mr. Whippy into the box, and the Scotsman Billy Gilmore nods home Brighton's equaliser. Now, a bunch of calamitous defending and jogger Benito passing leads to a Kyogo goal that puts us 2 1 down in this final. Our backs up against the wall, we were doing everything to unpick the lock. Even her love, her Mora didn't work. And if Jao Pedro catches that, any sweeter would be done for. Edwards on the ball, he slips through a bussing a gut Ronaldo. And honestly, as time stood still, you'd bet your bottom dollar that hit in the back of the net. With frustration rife amongst the cap, it's Joelman snapping Fatty's legs. Honestly, the Dane is lucky not to be walking away with a red card. The silly t we escaped the first half with 11 men, but still 2-1 down. And it's a bloody stalemate until the 74th minute. A soddy march pulls it back for Kurgo and his big bad Adam pulling out a big save. From the corner, Edward puts his body on the line. Pedro wins the ricochet. It falls to Farias from into Miami. We brought in for Trincao and 21 mil is about to earn that price tag as he slips it back through to Pedro and he... This is the shot. With just minutes left on the clock, it's Farius and Ronnie linking up on the counter attack. And with the pressure of an entire city resting on his shoulders, he's done it. It's the boy from Santa Fe, the hidden gem for Inter Miami, who we are crafting into a flawless diamond fit for a king. The centerpiece of the crown jewels. That goal was more than just something that keeps us in this game. It was the symbolic passing of the torch between a legend and the birth of a new generation. And we've done it. With a Farius finesse shot, the comeback is complete and we've won our first European final and won Sporting's first European trophy in over 60 years. And I'll tell you what, remember the name, Fasundo Farius. The youngster steps up to the stage to lift our fourth trophy in 18 months. And I'll tell you what, it will take some doing to keep up with this ratio for much longer. But we'll certainly give it a good bloody go, won't we, lads? Let the sweet sounds of Pitbull and Neo fill your ears as we're going to have the time of our lives celebrating this historic double. Okay, that was intense. I'm going to need a strawberry daiquiri and a hot bath to unwind after that. Confirmation of our cup and league double for you lot. Let's have a look at this gold tally. Look, 13 in 9 games. Just wow. And for those wondering, he's bloody smashed Messi's goal count. 30 goals in 22 games. That's insane. He's 39 years old. We've done so much here in six months. We could treat this as a one night stand and just leave on a high. Look, we do have some wicked options on the cards, but a part of me wants to say just one more season and give our all in Champions League. Let me know what you think. If you made it this far anyway, thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe. Comment if you think we should stay with our beloved sporting or we should find a new challenge paris fc season three episode two is out next so until then take care and adios